So what then are my top five? So starting with five, now I mentioned before how I said that, that uh, four by fours are among, I think, the most perfect puzzles in terms of challenge. You have really much of all the characteristics that I enjoy about a puzzle that qualifies as to be among my favorites. They're stable, so they're very playable puzzles. You've got a variability of the solves. You can do it parity free. You can do it a layer by layer. You can do it by reduction. And there's also a degree of unpredictability when it comes to the uh, aspects of the parody. So rather than just doing a 4x4, four four, uh, I figured I would put a mod. So what then is my favorite mod? There's a lot of different modifications that are out there where you can take a 4x4 four four and turn it into almost anything. By far, my absolute favorite mod, which is among the first mods that I owned, is the Megamorphix. So this by far is my favorite uh, mod. Uh, now this isn't the first one that I had. The first one that I had was actually made by uh, Trapoom. It was my very first Trapoom product and immediately fell in love with it because first off it's a kind of a difficult puzzle even as a 3x3 three three, uh, Master Power Morphings to solve because you've got issues with, equi uh, with false equivocation within the layers like these guys. So uh, add the false equivocation with the uh, 4x4 aspect and then you've got this. It's a very challenging one to do by AI method. It's a challenging one to do layer by layer because of it's a perspective vendor. So this puzzle I found myself coming back to again and again and again. It's a very stable puzzle so it's a very playable puzzle. Uh, the variability of the solve even bypasses that of a regular 4x4 because of the perspective bending and in terms of the unpredictability well there's a variety of different types of false equivocation and parodies. You get all of that with this. So you get every aspect of confusing elements elements that make this puzzle exciting. Uh, so uh, I also invite anybody who has questions on this puzzle, any opportunity that I have to pull this out I would take. So certainly within the top five as a definite number five would be the Megamorphics puzzle because of the uh, challenging uh, aspects of the last layer, the parity that happens being a 4x4, and the very unusual center parity that happens um, when you have false equivocations of centers. This is equivalent to this, this is equivalent to this, and that causes a whole bunch of confusion that can happen. So number five, the, me the uh, Megamorphics. So put that at number five. So what then is number four? Well, anybody who's watched my videos knows that I, I really enjoy three basic types of puzzles. I really like mods, like this guy. I love circle puzzles and I really, really like cuboids. Um, so cuboids of a variety of different types. I went through a, a cuboid classification uh, with that as well. So coming in at number four is gonna be among my favorite circle puzzles, which is this guy over here. So this is the, uh, the crazy four x four version two. Now there's a version one and a version three and they're great puzzles, but I really like this one. I like the look of this one. I like how it moves. I like the fact that it looks like a three by three. It looks like it got, it, it has stickers, even though they're, they're tiles. Uh, I like how the circles span across all the different pieces, except for the corners. Now the version three goes to the corners, but it doesn't really change the saw that much. And it, it has a look to it. That's very kind of monotonous in terms of the color. I like having the black underneath what appears to be false stickers. In this case, it's tile. Uh, mine is very smooth moving. It's a very playable puzzle. It can lock up a little bit and there can be some issues with stability. Um, there's also a degree of unpredictability when it comes to the parity with this, but there's also nice variability of the solve. You could solve this, well, um, as a 2x2 two two followed by a 4x4. Four four. You can do it layer by layer and you can do it parity free with the challenge that I had given, in which case you can do it by way of an AI solve. So a very fun puzzle. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of solving it. I find myself coming back to this again and again. Never get tired of it. So the uh, crazy 4x4 four four version 2, a solid number 4 in my favorite puzzle scheme. So now we're building down to the, to the top three. So what then is number three? Well, you knew the cuboids were coming and here they come. Now, I should say if there's any confusion in terms of the real five by five. So this was one of my most complex looking puzzles. Uh, this could easily have been among my favorite puzzles and uh, I did use this a lot. The only thing that um, had me put this above uh, this one as one of my favorites is just the playability. Uh, so this one is a very smooth moving puzzle. There's a little bit of a clickiness to it, so it it um, snags just a little bit, but really not a lot. The main thing was uh, just how 
quickly I can do the solve of this. This one is a whole process. It, it takes a while to solve, a little bit longer to solve, which is fun. And it's something that I, that I pull out uh, from time to time. Um, but it's just because of how long it takes to solve it that it didn't... Uh, um, that I didn't include it, but I really could have. I, I had a very difficult time deciding between this one and this one, but I think because this is mass-produced, easy for people to get, I decided to use this one because uh, more people could relate to it and could pick this up. Now, if this becomes mass-produced, well, it's going to bump this out of the way. So I thought I'd just mention that. Okay, so number three, as you get into the cuboids, would be this guy over here. This is Tomsey's 4x4x6. So 4x4x6 is a shape-shifting cuboid, so it has the same appeal that the 4x4x5, but it is not a domino, it's a shape-shifter. As a shape-shifter, once again, you have all the appeal of a 4x4 because it's solved uh, like that, but then you also have the appeal of a 4x4x5 because you've got some variability within here. So in many ways, this is becoming more and more like my perfect cuboid. So it's got, uh, uh, first off, it's a very playable puzzle, very stable puzzle. So this is the uh, this isn't a mass produced one. This is the uh, uh, this is Tom Z's original 3D printed one, which I find to be very stable. Uh, I only got the mass produced one to turn it into a cube illusion or a cuboid illusion, but this has really fit the bill. It's one of my what I call desert island puzzles, something that I could take to a desert island and solve in a variety of different ways, layer by layer, by reduction. But uh, basically, you get much of the cuboid elements with this. You reduce it down to. Uh, um, a 4x4, do the 4x4 solve, and then what, what I do from there is I then just solve these two the same way that I would solve any two layers here in the 5x5x4. So I get all the challenge and the fun of the 4x4x5, rather, and then I still get the 4x4 aspect as well. So in many ways, this is among one of the perfect cuboids that I have. So the 4x4x6, a solid number three that I come back to and solve again and again for the fun of a 4x4 and also the variability and challenge of, uh, of a cuboid, much like the 4x4x5. So number two, once again, we turn to the cuboids and we turn to Tom Z, and that's going to be this guy over here. Now, I, this, well, so this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is the 4x5x6. Now, I'll say as an honorable mention before getting into this, my very first three-dimensionally printed puzzle, which kind of spoiled me to all others, was Tom Z's 3x4x5. This is a three-dimensionally printed one. Uh, there's a mass-produced one. Again, I only bought that to turn it into a cuboid illusion, but this has been my go-to puzzle all along. So you can get this. Uh, I, I was deciding if I wanted this to be... Uh, call this uh, among my second favorite or this one to be my second favorite and I almost went with this one except I gotta say that although I'll use this and it's a lot of great fun this is the one that I turn to the most because it's just enough more of a challenge to where it occupies my attention more but it doesn't give me too much more time to solve without adding too much more of a challenge. But the fact that this is a, a four-layer puzzle at its lowest layer gives it that much more of a challenge because I've got more to do. Uh, so this, once again, is made by Tom Z. And among the reasons why I'm including this is I really want to push for mass production of this. If we've got mass production of this, we should get mass production of this. Tom Z's work is basically made for mass production. The stability of his puzzles, the um, quality of his work is really made to where it can uh, really be in the hands of, of, of anyone. Let's see if I can get this back without scrambling it. There it is. So you can see it's a very smooth moving puzzle. Um, this is another one of my desert island puzzles. Uh, it's what I call a brick cuboid. A brick cuboid uh, has many aspects that's like a domino in that you can do only 180 degree turns in one direction, which would be this direction over here, which you can do 90 degree turns in this direction. The main difference is with this, when you do 90 degree turns, you don't shape shift it, but in this case, you do shape shift it. And when you shape shift it, you get the possibility of bandaging and thus the possibility of maybe what's called a brick parity. Um, so, anyway, this one is a lot of fun to solve, a lot of fun to just turn around and move around. Uh, 
And uh, the reason why I included this above the 3x4x5 is it adds that much more of a challenge, which allows me to just have fun with the puzzle a lot more, a lot longer, but it doesn't cause a more obnoxious amount of time where you're spending more and more time just putting pieces in. Um, it's got a high degree of unpredictability because of the parodies that can happen as you're reducing this down to a 180 degree uh, uh, type solve. Uh, so this is, again, one of the perfect cuboids that, uh, that I own. And this is number two of the all-time favorites. So what then is number one? What is the puzzle that I turn to the most? What do I find pulling off the shelf more and more? What has a perfect combination of playability with good stability and uh, variability, which means I can potentially solve it in a variety of different ways if I tire of one way, and also unpredictability, which means as I solve it, there's always points that keep me puzzled that I don't have completely memorized, but I have to do a lot of construction and deconstruction. And after thinking about it, mulling over it, of all the puzzles in my collection, I have to say that number one would be one of Trapoom's work, which is this guy over here. Ultimate Shapeshifter 3x5x7. 3x5x7, now there's been a couple of iterations with this. There's a, a Shapeways version of this. And that's uh, this version over here. So this was the very first 3D project that I did with Gregoire Fennig. I basically asked him, I said, hey, I'd like to design uh, three by five by seven. Can you do it? And he said, sure. So this was the very first collaborative effort that I did. I'm not a designer, uh, but I do have ideas of what I want to see. And I really love this puzzle. As an ultimate shapeshifter, it, it means that it can turn in all directions and it just looks so darn cool and was so fun to play with. Uh, for what it is, it's a, it's a very stable puzzle. Uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve with it. You have to watch how you turn it. But for me, I put a lot of work in tensioning with this puzzle, a lot of work in um, you know, making sure that uh, it's uh, lubricated properly. But otherwise, every time I show this, people are just amazed. It's really a beautiful, artistic-looking puzzle. However, the way that it is, um, and the way that it's uh, designed, there is a little bit of an issue with stability. It is kind of a hard puzzle to carry around. As you can see, it's just a really fun one uh, to move around. So that's the 3x5x7. Um, however, what I was looking for is I was looking for something a little more compact, looking for something maybe a little bit more playable, so to speak. Uh, it's very stable. Pieces generally don't pop um, with this one. But in terms of playability, I wanted something that was a little bit more portable, and that would be this version over here. So I've got two versions. This one will always be near and dear to my heart because of the... Uh, um, collaborative uh, effort that I did with with Gregor Fennig. You can still pick this up. You can still get this. So this is available. It's not mass produced, but it is available through Shapeways at uh, Puzzle Maestro. Um, but this over here is uh, even more stable yet. So this is a stable, practically unpoppable puzzle, and it's the one that I turn to. So you can see that this is much more portable. I can carry it with me, and there's a uh, even better stability with this one, uh, and it can move in all different directions. Uh, variability of the solve as well. If I tire from doing it um, by a sequential solve as a 3x3 three three and then taking it down to its various cuboids, I can, I can reduce this using AI strategies as a 3x3. Three three. So I can put in clumps in the corner, clumps in the edges, and reduce this as a 3x3 three three like this and solve it as a 3x3. Three three. It takes a little longer, it's not the most efficient solve, but it can be done if that's what you should so decide to do. Uh, turn this here. Let's see, I think I may have accidentally scrambled it. Aha! Turn this up here and here. Uh, so you can do um, a reduction to a 3x3. Three three. You can do the usual um, ultimate shape shifter. Now the only ultimate shape shifter that you can get is going to be the 2x4x6, by by which is an excellent puzzle, uh, definitely worthwhile. This takes that challenge up to a whole nother level, and just like the 4x5x6, by by this absolutely needs to be mass produced and likely mass produced in this form. So that really needs uh, to happen. I, I would really like to see more cuboids like this, especially this one mass produced. Now. 
I do need to give a shout out to the next level up. You may ask the question, well, if you like this, if I like this above the 3x4x5, why do I like the 3x5x7? Why not the 4x6x8? And that's this one over here. This was uh, made by uh, Jeremy uh, Eisenberg. Uh, this is an excellent puzzle, and this takes the 3x4x5 and takes it up to a whole new level. Um, basically what it is, is it takes it into the 4x4 even layer version. The even layer means that I get all the parity with that. So the question is, why not choose this one over this? And the answer is, I very well could have. The only reason why I didn't is because the playability of this puzzle certainly just stands out. I think mods in general tend to be more playable because they're based on mass-produced puzzles. Uh, when it comes to 3D printed puzzles, they're more like prototypes. They're functional, it works, uh, but sometimes it can hang up and oftentimes it locks up a little bit completely and I just have to sort of move it around. Um, aside from that, it is rather playable, just not quite as playable as this guy over here. So that was the only reason why I went more in the direction of the 3x5x7 as opposed to the 4x6x8. But this again is, is a really fun puzzle to use and I, I do find myself using this again and again. And at one point I did do a solve where I reduced this actually to a 2x2. Two so you can do that. You can reduce this to a 2x2 two two using AI strategies as well. So there's a variability. So this really has all of the benefits that this has only at a higher level. The only thing that uh, took it down was a little bit of an issue with, uh, with the playability. Now, did I scramble this? I think I might have. Well, easily gotten back. If I would do it as a 4x4, four four, bring this over here. U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I. R, to U, R, I. And then from here, it's just a quick and inefficient two by two solve. So you can see it's, it's a fun puzzle. I like reducing it like this. It does take a while to do this over here to our U to our UI to our turn to our UI to our U to our so there you have it so uh, so yeah Jeremy this could very well have made the top five and perhaps it should have it was a very difficult decision uh, it is more complex than this it uh, does take a little longer to solve this one doesn't take quite as long to solve so I do find myself reaching for this a lot more and again I could reduce this as a three by three so once again this really needs to be mass produced um, I think I've done a tutorial on this if you'd like to see another one I'd be more than happy to do that um, but for that reason, the ultimate of ultimate shapeshifters, uh, this design here, there's also this design over here as well, but this one is the one that I reach for, and this is number one regarding my favorite all-time puzzles. So there you have it, my top 10 favorite puzzles. What do you think about my choices? Uh, what would you add there? What would you take away? Uh, again, it's a very personal kind of decision. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you'd like to see any other type of top 10 puzzles in the future. Aside from that, thanks for watching. So what is it that motivates us? What is it that we uniquely recognize as beautiful? What fuels our desires to achieve goals that are larger, and to create endless theme and variation. I have shown the puzzles I enjoy the most and in addition, what I value above all others. I invite you to find yours. Now show, now show it to the, the world. world.